Aon R is a GG cycle LOX LNG or LOX methane engine. Produces about 270,000 pounds of thrust at sea level. We have 13 Aon R engines on our first stage, and we have a single vacuum variant on our second stage that produces about 323,000 pounds of thrust. What it does is we feed fuel and oxygen in a fuel rich mixture ratio to the gas generator, which is then ignited by gaseous hydrogen and gaseous oxygen, which jump starts the gas generator ignition. That provides exhaust gas that is fuel rich to the turbine wheels that spins the pump. That, however, is not enough to jump start the engine. So we supplement that force with high pressure nitrogen, which blows into the turbine wheel, the turbine exhaust and spin starts the engine. That gas generator then spins the pumps, which pulls propellant from the vehicle, liquid oxygen and liquid natural gas into the combustion chambers for the engine and provides for us. Terranar program leverages densified propellant, or propellant that's cooled below its saturation temperature at ambient pressure. This is really important to the capability of the vehicle because it allows us to get more propellant mass in the same size tank, and it also provides us better thermal margin to saturation or cavitation when we're operating the engine. You have two different variants of Aon R on Terran R. You have the stage one engine, which is designed to operate at sea level for the most amount of thrust at the most critical time, which is liftoff. Then you have an upper stage engine, which is Aon R vacuum, which is designed to operate in the vacuum of space. Aon R stage one, Aon R vacuum look very similar. There is one major difference between them and then that is the nozzle. Aon R leverages a lot of the learning that we gained from Aon one. It's the same cycle, a gas generator and uses the same propellants, LOX and LNG. But Aon R is a much larger engine with much higher thrust and also requires us to have throttle and MR control in order to meet the mission of the Terran R vehicle. So we structured the entire Aon R program around several iterations and that also informed our choice of manufacturing technologies. By leveraging additive, we're able to quickly make changes to key components like the combustion chamber, the injector, the pump, learn from test, deploy a new design, rinse and repeat. We use powder bed fusion or PBF printing for a lot of our, our complicated fluid components. We also use the wire arc additive manufacturing or WAM technology that we developed from Terran 1 for cladding and feature buildup on our combustion chamber. Overall, we have four main iterations of the Aon R engine. The first was ultimately a manufacturing demonstrator and a chance for us to go and try to build this much larger, more complex hardware. We called that AR 1.1. The second iteration, AR 1.2, is what we tested in late 2023. This was able to hit the state point of the engine, hit the thrust and MR that we were trying to hit, but it was not a flight-like package and it wasn't capable of gimbal. We had a number of engine failures in AR 1.2 that really gave us the key learning that we needed to build a more robust, high-performance product in AR 1.3 and beyond. We were able to meet our MDC milestone with the AR 1.2 iteration, which was the first one that we got onto the test stand. I think that's really a testament to the quality and experience of the team, as well as the key choices that we made on engine cycle and propellants in order to leverage our previous learning. The very first time you start testing a rocket engine, you should expect failure. Part of the process for developing an engine is ensuring that your block upgrades as you go through the development process include that expectation of failure. If you know your first engine is going to fail, which it will, you focus on the developmental areas that are the hardest to obtain. Startup, shutdown, throttling. Don't combine all of the additional pieces that you can learn on a bench somewhere else. One of the key advantages of the GG cycle is that you can get really high quality data from component testing of your TCA and your gas generator. And that set a foundation for us to stretch even higher and push for higher on performance. AR 1.3, which we've been testing in late 2024 into 2025, is really a, a flight-like engine design. It fits the vehicle package, it's capable of gimbling, it has our full-size engine skirt, so we're now we're hitting our full thrust and full MR, and it has all the features that the vehicle needs as well, including pressure and heat exchangers. Maybe most importantly, AR 1.3 also included flight-like avionics and a flight intent software stack. This is the first chance for the Terran R program to really demonstrate this full end-to-end -end capability. We use an engine controller that controls the startup and shutdown sequence, as well as closes the loop on throttle for vehicle throttle control. We're getting all of our last little changes in. We're dialing in the operating point that we're gonna to use to qualify the engine. And then we're gonna roll that all into our AR 1.4 iteration, which will qualify and we intend to fly. Where a dev campaign paints where the engine operates, the qual paints where the engine should run in flight. 
and establish that life expectancy. If you know the total life expectancy of an engine is two tests for acceptance testing and stennis, and then one static fire prior to launch, and then a total stage one ascent, and then a relight, and then a landing burn. You take all of those starts and all of those run times, and you build them together into your program. And your qual program basically says, this engine can operate under those specific conditions as many times as we need it to. AONR is designed for reuse in mind from the beginning. So our intention is from very early flights to be able to recover stage one. What that essentially means is that the engine has to relight in space on its way down. What that requires is a very simple approach in the design to ensure that complexity does not add failure mode. A hydrogen oxygen ignition system for the gas generator and a spin start is a very stable, simple approach to relighting an engine. That simplistic approach is usually the best for ensuring reusability and reliability, which is probably one of the most important components of stage one, that function on relight. Any difference between the way you test your engine and the way you operate them at flight is an opportunity for an issue or a failure mode that you didn't see in test to crop up and keep your vehicle from working on the day that matters. This means that we need to really understand how the engine is operated on the vehicle, what its environment is gonna be on the vehicle, and then investing in our test capabilities to make sure that we can do exactly the same thing on the ground. We have both the engine team, the test team, as well as our mission reliability team constantly looking, what are the tests like you fly deviations? What are we not anticipating? How can we eliminate those before we get the stage? test. We think this is really going to help us move faster through stage testing and have a more successful launch. There's an industry term called test like you fly, which I've always thought is a little backwards. It actually should be you fly like you tested. When you test the rocket, you're bounding what you know the rocket is capable of doing reliably. I know the rocket will light at this temperature. I know the rocket will fly at this pressure. I'm confident the systems work there and then you should baseline what you think the flight profile will stress the rocket to and then test to a larger window than that to ensure that you're not doing anything for the first time when you release the rocket for flight. 